Because of citizens and grassroots, the Design Center exists. But I don't know whether it would have happened without the Franklin Street Corridor. That was such a big topic. It just took off. Phil Bredesen became mayor in, I think, 91. And he really wanted to do something about downtown. So he decided to build this arena, and he built it right on Broadway. So the planning department and public works department started thinking, oh my God, we have to do something about all this traffic. So suddenly there was this plan to put a six lane highway along Franklin Street, which was a few blocks south of Broadway. When I heard about that, it just intuitively felt wrong. You don't do this into a city. You don't cut off one part of downtown from the south part of downtown. We were pretty appalled about all this. And I came home and Ann Roberts had left a 20 minute, I timed this because it's the longest voicemail ever. And she had left a 20 minute recording that said, you have to get back here because you have to write about this. I started investigating and of course it looked horrible because essentially they were building a highway. And so the idea was to make a better east-west connector. That's what they said that they were going to do. Seven lanes with a continuous turn lane. But the connection points were the two interstates, the interstate on the east bank and then the one um, to the west of the gulch. And so they designed something to build a connection between interstates. And of course it looked like an interstate. Not only are you gonna have high-speed traffic on it, but it's gonna to be too wide for pedestrians to cross with comfort. I mean, a corridor in a building is a place that people go through to get from point A to point B. It's not where they hang out. And so just the use of the term corridor as opposed to street or boulevard indicated the mindset. So yeah, it was pretty horrifying. I finally wrote a big cover story about it in November of 1994. I wrote article after article after article about this stuff. And some of her articles were provocative. Didn't make me popular with the executive director of MDHA, for example. It didn't make me popular with the head of the planning department. It didn't make me popular with the head of the public works department. I was upset that the government was not listening to us. You know, here's the big bad government coming in, gonna put a road through our city. Basically, we just didn't like what they were doing and, uh, and knew there was a better way. So the AIA decided in one of their monthly meetings to have a forum on this. And uh, after that discussion, uh, Christine said, We're getting tired of spending all the time on the phone talking about these one-on-one. -on -one. How can we move this forward beyond this one panel? She said, I'm thinking we just put out a notepad and tell people if they want to keep talking about these things, they could sign up. And then the Urban Design Forum came out of that. We would have 60 to 70 people every month. We met every month very civic-oriented uh, designers, people from the city, uh, interested community members. We sat on the most uncomfortable chairs. Brutal to sit on. We bought a cooler beer and rolled it in there and everybody would just, you know, get a beer and drink beer and talk, you know? It was great. They were remarkable gatherings. Some were very difficult. I remember one of them, it's sort of a funny story. We had a guy that was talking about the fountain in the park across from the library. Who the hell do you in the design forum think you are? In the long haul, he ended up being very supportive of what we were doing. Uh, and that happened quite often. So it was a very organic um, organization. It sort of, it was just grassroots. It was a very high energy level because we actually thought that we could make a difference. We felt that we knew that there were things that could be done better. In the music world, you'd say we were riffing. We were riffing, big time. Corridor was the overwhelmingly most important topic, but it bled off into a lot of other things. I got another call from a state official. He was mad. He was mad that we were messing with the interstates. 
That's federal, it's none of your business. Stay off my damn interstates. I remember that so well. We needed to be having conversation about the built environment in a way that we were not. What we found was is that we didn't really have the appropriate language to argue with them and make our point. Somebody said, we should have a class. There needs to be an educational piece to all of this. So we decided to have a class. We decided in 1995 to have a class to get everybody on the same footing. So they sort of hired me to come over and I, I taught a, a course every Saturday morning. And we, we talked about urban design and how to make a city a great city. And um, my goals were actually pretty simple. Well, it, it was to go back in history and follow how good cities are built. The Urban Design Forum really was the thing that coalesced a lot of the passion and put it in a very directed way. So the forum went for about four or five years. All along, of course, the uh, Franklin Carter was sort of, you know, we were making our inroads with Franklin Carter and trying to rethink that. Fortunately, Bill Purcell, who was at the Center for Public Policy, decided he would go to a couple of these things. What's this all about? So he'd show up and he, he would come fairly often to these things. In that process, that charrette process, that constant coming together to think and rethink, uh, I came to realize the importance of both those efforts and ultimately uh, the, the creation of an organization that would sustain that kind of attention and focus and energy for the long term. There was always discussion about where we go next. Well, the goal was always to have a design center. And we felt that if we had an urban design center, there would be a place where you could advocate, you could advocate for the, doing the right thing before you had to defeat a giant wrong thing. People don't know what to advocate for if they don't know what's possible. And so I think we needed to help people understand what was possible. And then when Bill Purcell campaigned for mayor, he campaigned on a promise to not build the Franklin Quarter, but to build a Franklin Boulevard. And he also campaigned on a promise to establish an urban design center. Well, he got a bunch of support that night from a lot of us that were there. Skipping about four years of the forum then, uh, Bill Purcell becomes mayor. When he was elected, I remember Bredesen called me up and he said, well, now that Purcell's won, you beat it. And at that point, I felt I was on cloud nine because I felt like, oh my God, this is gonna happen. I mean, interestingly, the fight over the corridor actually brought attention to the potential that Sobro had. It was a catalyst. It was something that inspired us to do more than that. Bill Purcell was very neighborhood oriented, really involved the neighborhoods. So he comes into office, calls Kim Hawkins and says, this is what I want you to do. You need to, we need to get a design center up and running. And off we went. It was really important, I think, to all of us, and, and to me, I very at the very forefront, that if we were gonna make a design center that really did work for the broader community, then we needed to be able to represent the broader community. Um, and so I think it was uh, imperative that our board and that our structure and that our engagement really included all. The point in time when it came into its entirety as an organization was the creation of the plan of Nashville. On October 7th, 2004, the Nashville Civic Design Center introduced the plan of Nashville, a comprehensive community supported vision for Nashville's downtown and surrounding urban neighborhoods. Some 800 Nashvilleans participated in the process that created the plan, joining in a series of 47 community workshops and describing in imaginative detail how they wanted their city to look and work in the future. The plan of Nashville is a 50-year vision for the city. So it, it was 
meant to look big picture and long haul at how the built environment of Nashville should evolve. There was a huge community involvement process that took about two years. And so we went through a process of having community meetings after community meetings. And did workshop after workshop. We get together and we try to, to boil down all these thoughts into several and we ended up with 10. Local planners, designers, and other volunteers, along with the Nashville Civic Design Center staff, took this communal vision and turned it into the plan of Nashville and its 10 principles. The whole idea of Plan of Nashville, I think, goes back to what the Civic Design Center was to be about from the beginning. And that was that people understood what the possibilities were. They understood that they could dream big. That is really uh, where the Design Center shines, so when they can show people there's another way to do this. And, uh, and I've got to say, I mean, of my career of probably a little over 40 years, it's, it's definitely one of the top five things that I was ever involved in or close to involved in that, that I'm very proud of. I am so proud of the Civic Design Center and where it's gone in the last 20 years. You look back and you think, we did good. And we felt at the time we were having, in addition to being intensely involved, we were having a hell of a lot of fun. None of us were doing it for credit. We were doing it for the good of the city that we loved.